All right, welcome back, folks, to the Short Vol Show Live, and uh, we are coming to you from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, home of the Pilgrims. And as we come into the day today, what a great week it has been for trading, at least for me, uh, at least coming in from last week. We had a little VIX spike, and we'll look at it on the chart here. And then it went right from that to uh, just continued rally. And so... Uh, things just happen to work out uh, for my position, uh, which is great. But I wanted to talk to you today. You can see the title of the video is Build a Better Mousetrap. And I have to uh, credit uh, this gentleman I've been talking to a lot recently, Josh, for that phrase. Um, what do we mean when we talk about building a better mousetrap? And how does that apply to you as a trader out there? Now, one of the biggest things, I, I think... Uh, to um, to build a better mousetrap and essentially also um, make yourself more profitable is to start to get to know yourself. Um, when you first start out trading, there's going to be an adjustment period for pressure. Now, I remember being in the pit and um, when stuff started to get busy or I started to lose money or stuff didn't go my way uh, for the first year or so I really I had difficulty handling the stress and I would do stuff I had tells like I would always grab my head like this when I was stressed and people knew when I was stressed because I would be grabbing my head like that but it's going to take you a while and learning how to discipline yourself when you're under pressure now you know if we're in school we might have like social pressure or uh other sort of or like uh, pressure to get good grades or something but financial pressure is something completely uh, different um, financial pressure really gets to the heart of things um, you may have kids to support you may um, have the rent due um, you may have borrowed money from a family member uh, and learning how to um, Respond in an organized way under pressure is key to being a successful trader. Um, learning how to set the emotion aside and make rational decisions under pressure is um, what is going to separate you from others. And the times when stuff is going nuts or the times when um, an extreme is happening, those are the times of most opportunity. And so... It's important to figure out how to rise to the occasion. You know, when you talk about NFL players, for example, like your Tom Brady's or, or your, your Michael Jordan's are people who are able to, when the pressure ramps up, they use that to motivate them. Now, you're not going to be able to um, start a lot of this learning process until you're actually risking uh, money. I know people talk a lot about learning with paper trading, but I've never really been much of a fan of paper trading. Paper trading mean like meaning like you you're not using real money. You're just kind of pretending trading. You know, I I was always of the case that I'd rather have a, an account with a hundred dollars in it of real money than be paper trading with a hundred thousand dollars because you know if you're paper trading clearly what's going to happen is you're going to make money, right? And it's going to be a bummer because you're not going to get to keep it. Um, I went through a training program when I was younger to become a, an options market maker. And it was basically like a year training program where first we did classroom study and then we did mock trading in front of a blackboard. And then we were put on an actual badge in the trading pit. But initially our our profits and our losses, we didn't get to keep the money if we made it. But the good news is we weren't responsible for the money if we lost it. Although we kind of were anyways, because anybody knows that as a trader working for our firm, you can't uh, consistently lose money and stay in business. So um, so for me, I'd rather be using real money. It's the same thing as like, I don't know, playing poker or playing, uh, I don't know, whatever. It's It's always more serious with real money because real money allows you to focus and it allows you to take things seriously. Um, another thing about the, the concept of building a better mousetrap is um, what it, it, 
you're going to have to define what your goals are um, as a trader and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, you know, some people will be building a portfolio and will be looking for long-term portfolio appreciation. Other people will be uh, trying to put together a series of uh, maybe earnings plays to, to build their account by making a series of sort of individual trades that are going to come on and then come off. Uh, uh, there's lots of different ways of trading things. I, I have a friend who's a day trader. He trades futures uh, during the day, and he's very successful, but he very rarely has any risk overnight. Uh, I have another friend who pretty much solely only has risk overnight. He, he, he believes that you know, that is the period where the markets go up the most. And his, so his the majority of his risk is on overnight. So uh, before you s attempt to build a better mousetrap, you're going to want to figure out where you fit into the whole grand scheme of finance. Um, m this channel here and my positions are, I would basically define myself as an options position trader. Um, and so that uh, I guess different ways to define yourself as a trader is what is the duration that you tend to have trades on for? That's an important part of it. Um, there's people, like I said, that are day traders that are trying to like, you know, buy a, a stock for $31 and sell it for 32 that day or a future or an option. Um, there are people who uh, swing trade. They'll have stuff on a duration of like an average of a day or two. There are people um, who are, like I might be um, sort of managing a portfolio that where they um, they have positions on for years and they're slowly building it up. Um, and th that has uh, traditionally been what many, many people do uh, as investors in the market. Um, so you need to kind of figure out where you fit into the scheme of things. This The positions that I demonstrate uh, on this channel are, are usually... Um, have a duration of anywhere between, um, you know, a day and six months, I would say. So that's a pretty wide range, but typically um, the positions last, I would say, a month that I've been trading lately. Um, a lot, sometimes I try to demonstrate stuff and thus I kind of trade more than maybe I would if I wasn't uh, showing this stuff on the channel. But that's kind of where I fit into the game. And my, most of my trades are VIX related, uh, the SIBO volatility index. And so let's let's get on to that for a second. Um, so we saw volatility come in a lot yesterday. Um, let's pull up a chart of where we are with the VIX from yesterday. And I'm going to, I have a VIX chart here, but I'm going to change the uh, duration of it here to a day. Or well, let's go to a five day. So we can see the uh, the big down moves of uh, first fr uh, Friday and then Monday. And we really had a gap down yesterday. Most of the action happened in between sessions. And um, actually where we were at 7 in the morning is lower than where we closed. So we basically had this gap move down and then kind of sideways action all day. So to, to profit from this down move, you had to be in the day before, right? There wasn't a huge day trading range yesterday. But if we back up a little bit further, you can see this is a continuation of a couple days down move in the VIX, which is great. First, last, you live in, on Cape Cod too. That's great. Cool. Awesome. Uh, where do you live on Cape Cod? <laughs> Not the exact address. But uh, all right. So let's back this up a little bit, though, so we can see the spike because we're coming off a spike in the VIX. Okay. So here you can see it on the 12th was low here. And I was fortunate that I, I was able to... Uh, cover take off my spreads uh pretty close to the bottom of this spike here uh down here somewhere and then i was able to reestablish up here um and so that was cool uh currently what i have on now that we've kind of made a little we made it kind of a big move lower yesterday i currently have this spread on and i want to show it to you um so I am long some puts out in December in VXX. I'm long the December 28 puts, and I wanted to do something to finance those. So what I did, all right, so I am long December 28 puts, and what I did is I sold 
half as many of the puts that I bought, I sold uh, these uh, May 33 puts against them, uh, which expire in three days. So essentially, if we continue to move lower, we'll make money. Um, if we stay where we are, we collect decay every day. It looks like we collect $83 a day in decay. And um, if we move higher, um, we, we, we've kind of... Uh, you know, we'll collect some money from this uh, from this move. So this is kind of like, it's what I've done is I've given up some downside to collect some uh, some premium in the next few days, um, and it's kind of in line with my assessment that yes, we've made a move down, but I don't see us making like a huge move down in the next couple of days. And if we do kind of pop back up, then I've done something against my puts to help finance them. You know, buying puts. Uh, in VIX products is, is is dangerous because it costs decay every day and they can burn up your profitability if you don't do something against them. So I was considering um, putting a put spread on in December. I, I ended up taking off the spread I had on because we had that nice down move and I had a profitable week last week. So I was like, well, let's just wrap it up with a bow. Uh, Put that bank that profitability, and we uh, will reset. And so, um, so that's what I did. And I bought these December puts. Uh, it, you know, when you're buying puts that are 200 days out in time, the decay per day is not that much for them. In fact, if we let's pull that up really quick and, and take a look at this uh, analysis of this position in our uh, in our Greeks in our analysis tab on Thinkorswim here. And if I, let's see, da, 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 da. okay, so I'm just trying to, to maybe blow this up a little bit bigger so you can see it a little bit better maybe. All right, there we go. All right, so if you look at the Greeks here, what we can do is we can pull this up and it will pull out our positions a little bit. We can see that we have, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, only show the long puts. I'm going to unclick the puts I sold against them. So I'm long 10 of these D28 puts. Okay, so it's showing that those cost $18 a day. Well, almost $19 a day. Now, $19 doesn't sound like a lot, but um, it is day after day after day. You know, that's 100 bucks a week. Uh, this is a relatively small position, uh, but 100 bucks a week, if we move sideways for the next month, that's going to burn through my uh, profitability. So uh, buying these puts uh, represents a short 258 deltas. That means for every dollar that the VIX goes down, we'll collect 258. It, it seems like a decent ratio, right? $18 a day into K versus 258 deltas. At the speed we've slowly been moving lower, it seems financeable. Um, however, let's take a look and see what happens when we sell those puts against them. All of a sudden, okay, we're still short here. Now look, if if we if we got down to 28, we wouldn't be short anymore. We'd be long down at 28. But we only have three days, and that's down six dollars in VXX. So that's pretty unlikely. Um, I'm not sure why I've it set down 17 percent. Let's switch this to down 10 percent. So down 10 percent, we're slightly long as well. 30, 82, we're slightly long. Um, but where we are now, we're short. 79 deltas. And as we approach the strike of these short puts, it's going to change our, our delta. But we look now with the sale of five puts, well, we're collecting $81 a day. So, you know, the things just kind of hang in this area. We're collecting money every day. And in the meantime, in three days, these puts come off and we can figure out either we can just keep our short and pay the decay for a few days or we can sell something else against it. So I, I like having positions where kind of nothing's happening. As nothing's happening, you're collecting money every day. That's a good, it's a good feeling to be collecting money every day. And by the same token, we don't have a ton of risk with this position, right? Um, our upside risk, it, essentially we're long these December puts. So if we spike, we have until December 
for it to come back down again, 200 days. So that, that seems like uh, we've given ourselves a good amount of time. And um, if we move lower, you know, if we move a buck lower, we're still making money to the downside, plus we're collecting the decay. If we move more than 10% lower, well, that $80 a day in uh, that we're collecting is going to offset some of the loss if we make a big move lower. So um, it's a nice, comfortable position to have on that has a good chance of making money in the next couple of days, and we'll see what happens from there. Um, like I said, it's been a nice little run here. Um, I want to quickly thank people who have signed up with Patreon, and we got some new Patreon supporters. That's much appreciated. I know the output hasn't been huge from this channel in the last little bit, but we kind of go in spurts here, as you know. We, we go from uh, super busy to not so much at times. Um, and I'm going to be doing an interview later in the week for another channel, uh, more of that to come. And, you know, it's, I've been very, um, worried. It, it's very worrying this whole pandemic and stuff. You know, I've been stuck at home in Massachusetts. We just found from the, uh, governor yesterday when things are going to kind of open. And I've been worried about, you know, the U S and all this stuff, but at the same time, I've just, um, kind of had faith in the market and kept a, a long position. Uh, you know, when you're when you're short VIX products, you're basically synthetically long. You're, you're basically uh, long the market. And I've kept long the market, and it, it's really worked out. Um, I'll be interested to see if we can break out of the – and break into new lows with the VIX. Um, before the spike, you can see on the chart behind me here, before the spike, we were um, – we had a low, looks like uh, in VXX it was 31.23. Let's see where it was actually in the actual VIX. Uh, we're still up at 34. It'll be interesting to see if this week we can take out that low. And uh, I'm curious if we can move to a new range in the VIX of like a range between like maybe let's say 20 and 24. Um, we, we haven't been able to break 25 yet on the way down. If you look at this chart and you back it up even more, we're, we're trending lower slowly on the VIX since that big spike, right? So if we go to 180 days, I mean, this is really the big picture right here, and which we have to keep in mind. Look, even with that spike last week, we are coming off of this huge spike, and we're still in the huge spike. So keep that in mind. Um, there's no way to tell if we get another pop again, or, um, but it seems clear to me that if the market continues to rally, we are going to come off this spike slowly and get back down towards levels where we were at before. We may not get back to a VIX of like 15 anytime really soon, but I could see us getting down to 20 again uh, if we continue to rally. So we'll see what happens. Um, really the market not doing very much right now. Oh, there's one more thing I wanted to, to talk about um, is ACB. I I was long ACB. It, it got down to like 70 cents. And I was long, you know, a bunch of shares for a while. Uh, obviously, I got hurt a little bit on the way down. But uh, this stock reverse split the other day. So it's a little bit confusing. Um but it had a huge rally. Uh, they had good earnings, and stock got revitalized. And look at this. This is post. It did split, I believe, f uh, five for one or ten for one. Let me look that up as I talk to you here. But um, even so, it rallied fifty percent uh, yesterday, and really, uh, coming back to life. Okay. So it did have a, uh, 12 for one reverse split. So really, uh, pretty extreme. So that means that, um, even at 18, you know, 12 for one's pretty big split. So that means for this to be a $5 stock again, like for, if it came back to $5 where it was, that would mean, uh, 60 in the stock. So even, yeah, that all said and done, fifty percent rally is a pretty big rally in this in this thing, and it's it's back up to eighteen and uh, really exploding. I think that this reverse split. We talk about how mathematically speaking, splits uh, don't change the game, 
you know, the math is that nothing's created or destroyed during a split. But um, what I always like, the caveat I always give is that a split will give publicity to a stock and sometimes it can make it rally due to that. And I think that's probably the case here is that ACB all of a sudden popped up on everyone's charts again. Now, remember, like two years ago, ACB was the most traded stock in Robinhood, which kind of makes sense, you know, the quote unquote sexiness of cannabis stocks with the millennials and uh, and all that. But it has been such a dog for so long. I mean, look at this chart behind me. It's just been such a dog. And um, even though I'm like, well, um, too bad I got out of my long. I'm ha actually, you know, it still is lower than where I got out of my long, I think. So, <laughs> um, but look at that. Boom. Amazing. I guess it isn't. Well, the thing is, is like I did write it down a ways, but then I did buy a little bit when it was like under a buck, but I only hold on to it for a couple of days. But look at that move. I mean, just boom, ACB. Unbelievable. And uh, if we go to the rest of the uh, MJ industry here, like if we if we take a look at YOLO, really a uh, significant comeback in this industry. Now, it was about time. I mean, this stuff was getting pounded and pounded and pounded and so many people lost money in it. Now it's popped back up. Um, but once again, you know, I would caution people, do you really want to jump in here? Because it could give back a whole lot really quickly. This is a very volatile industry. So many people have gotten burned. I'm staying away from it. I'm sticking with my VIX stuff, but I did just want to provide coverage because um, I was trading this stuff for a while. In fact, uh, um, it was my biggest, my biggest winners of 2017 were MJ stocks. All right, so there you have it. Um, let's take a quick look at VIX Central for your uh, term structure update. And on the term structure update here, we see that we have uh, Contango currently at, and if I get out of your way once again, Contango currently at 4.32%. It was up around 5% yesterday. Um, although the chart is flat, keep in mind that this relationship between the front two month futures is the crucial relationship because that is what is really affecting the um, decay for these products. So, um, we want to keep in mind that particular relationship. Now, if we quickly go to the ProShares website, actually, ProShares website isn't even showing expiration dates anymore, which is strange. Uh, so we are uh, obviously coming right into expiration here. Um, on the VIX. So what that means is that this relationship here between the front two months futures basically doesn't matter anymore. And we'll be looking ahead to the relationship between the second two month futures. You can see that number right here is 0.66%, which is low, but look for this number to uh, get much steeper in the next couple of days. As soon as, as soon as expiration's over, um, which I believe is tomorrow morning. As soon as expiration is over, look for this um, curve to steepen here. Ultimately, it's uh, great that both of these are far away from the VIX. Um, we'd like this relationship to steepen, but um, it's good that the VIX is finally back under the futures again and has stayed that way. We've stayed. Uh, we went back into backwardation last week after being in Contango for only two days. Now we're back uh, in Contango again. And like I said, we're coming into expiration, but this May future is essentially moot now. Um, it doesn't matter because uh, products are made almost entirely of the June future. By tomorrow, it will be made entirely of the June future. And then July will start to come into the equation as we switch gears and move into the next expiration cycle in the VIX. Um, we didn't stay in backwardation very long. In fact, that little spike was a typical spike for the, for for us. But once again, as I illustrated before, a typical spike, but we are in the middle of coming off of a big spike. So this is a mini spike, but it's in the middle of coming off the big spike. So there you have it. Um, 
thanks for watching. I think I'll, I'll probably edit out the little guitar part from the beginning there. Um, let me know if you if you like that or don't like it. I, it. It looked like there were like three people waiting, and as soon as I started playing guitar, like the three people turned off, turned it off, and went <laughs> elsewhere. So maybe I shouldn't do that. But um, I think what I'm going to do is actually like um, pre-make a little a little jam so that it's it's good, and then uh, just play that briefly in the background or something like that for y'all. All right, thanks for watching. Um, Let's, let me look at the chat here for just a second to say bye to everybody. Oh, Chatham, cool, first, last. Yeah, Chatham's cool. Right down the street from uh, us here. I'm in Orleans. And best of luck to everybody trading today. Um, the plan, I, I, I would say if you don't have a VIX position on now, maybe wait for a little pop to put something on because we have had a little run down here. Um, we might not get a pop or we might get a pop. Who knows? Uh, love guitar. Thank you, Ame. That's very kind of you. Um, but we are looking for the continued down move. Um, for a long time, I was really wrong. And anybody who followed me, and who, if you'd followed my trades, you wouldn't have done well. But for the last month, uh, it's been working out great. And staying short the VIX in one way or another has worked out great. So I, I highly recommend you checking it out. Hey, what's up, Mac7 Radio Intercepts? Uh, thanks, guys, for coming on. I appreciate you just like putting a like or leaving a comment in the video always helps out because it just brings my videos back up on the uh, in the stats. My stats are terrible for this month. They were great for last month. They're just terrible for this month. I'm like in the red and everything. Um, but the thing is, is, is that, you know, I'm not going to come on uh, unless I have something to say. I'm not just going to come on just to come on. So um, kind of ebbs and flows, but that's the way it is. All right, best of luck trading today. I believe I will be on tomorrow, and I'm going to be doing an interview uh, later in the week. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. See you guys soon.